Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. So if you watched my video last week when I took you on a tour of my workspace and my hoard and all my hiding places, you definitely had a response. Most of the comments were either y'all didn't think it was that bad, I made y'all feel better because my sash is 10 times worse than y'all's, or y'all were gonna make y'all husbands watch this video so he would get off y'all back because <laughs> my hoard was way bigger than anything y'all had. So none of those responses really make me feel any better, but I feel like it kind of leads to the discussion that I want to have today with y'all. Because I definitely found since starting my YouTube channel that lots of resellers have these hoarding tendencies. And when I say hoarding or junk or hoard, I don't mean it in a bad way. Like that's just what we call our stuff. We're not like true hoarders. At least I don't think I am. Um, but I feel like maybe we could definitely use some tips and tricks to kind of help us keep things under control because I'm sure y'all all know that an excessive amount of stuff is very overwhelming, which leads to you being unproductive because you're so overwhelmed by your stuff that you don't know what to do. And as y'all know, I am moving. So this is just extra overwhelming. And I really want to dig deep and bring out all my self-control and willpower and just really try not to let this happen again. So to do that, I need to figure out like what I did that I shouldn't do again. So I just want to go over like a few things that I've been thinking about. And also y'all had a lot of questions in that video. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna answer some of y'all questions and comments from the last video. Okay, so first I think you should ask yourself, how much time do you realistically have to work? Because that is going to determine how much stuff you could bring in because you have to deal with the stuff that you bring in. Now, in my brain, I like to think that I'm a full-time reseller and I have five days a week while the kids are at school and daycare to work. When in reality, I'm a full-time mom because now, as y'all know, I've been doing this all on my own while my husband worked out of town. So, realistically, I maybe had one day a, work, a week to work on reselling because I had to be mom, kids got sick, doctor's appointment, extracurricular activities, all that stuff. Plus, I have YouTube and I needed to set aside time to be able to do that. So like, if I go back and think about it, I really only had one day a week to dedicate to reselling, not five days like I was thinking in my brain. So just really kind of think about how much time you have to dedicate to doing this. Another thing you need to think about is how much space you have. Because I have a big area to work. I did come from a very small area before we worked here, before we lived here. So having a big area to work definitely helped. I was able to crank out projects a whole lot faster but I'm not gonna have that big area anymore. So I need to make sure that the area that I do have, which is gonna be about a half a garage, that I don't fill up with stuff. I wanna make sure I can move and still get all my projects done as quickly as possible. So really evaluate how much space you have and not crowded with stuff. Because once again, that is going to lead to you being unproductive. You're going to be overwhelmed. You're not going to have room to move. You're going to have to move stuff out of the way to work and then move it back. And y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like it's going to be a whole mess. So try the best you can to keep your work area free from clutter. Okay. Also, do we need to buy everything? No, I am guilty of this. And I know now that I don't like creating 20 of the same item. Like I like to have an idea, make a few things and move on to the next idea. Like those antique levels that I made into little totes. Y'all, I have so many of those and I made so many totes already and I really don't wanna make any more. So it would have been perfectly acceptable for me to just buy 
five of those instead of like the 15 or 20 that I bought. So when you come across a cool item, yes, you want to pick it up, but do you need to buy all of them? Probably not. <laughs> so maybe just limit the amount of stuff you bring. Now, free stuff, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's hard to say no to free stuff because you don't know if that particular item is going to be offered to you free again. So you have to kind of take it. And then if I've totally picked up free stuff or picked up stuff off the side of the road, taken free stuff, and then gotten rid of it later on. So it's kind of like no harm done there. I didn't spend any money on it. Um, I thought I had an idea. It didn't work out, whatever. So I don't know. I'm going to give y'all a pass on free stuff. Like, you know, you got to take free stuff. <laughs> I feel like I may not be helping here. <laughs> Another thing you should be thinking about is what are you buying stuff for? Because I know not everybody that watches me is a reseller. They do stuff for their personal use. And that is now going to be what I'm going to be doing as well. So I would definitely suggest I love thrifting as much as the next person and I want to buy everything but if you see something and you cannot immediately think of where that is going to go in your home just leave it there is always more junk and y'all know that y'all know that y'all don't need me to tell y'all that there is a never-ending amount of junk to find so if you do not have a spot for it then you need to leave it behind if you are a reseller and you don't have, like you have enough back stock to work on but you know we like to go thrifting to kind of keep the juices flowing and like spark our creativity and that's the fun part right but you need to be very selective about what you bring it in if you already have too much stuff so i would think about is this something i can make a big profit on if it is then i would probably pick it up is it something that is going to take minimal work? Like maybe it's something that I don't even need to do anything to and I can just flip it right quick. Then I might pick it up. But having a smaller amount of stuff and bringing in a smaller amount of stuff is really going to help you from being overwhelmed and really help your productivity. Now, is all this stuff I'm talking about things that I do? I mean, obviously y'all have seen my space, so no, but I'm trying to get better, okay? So we're gonna work on this together. So I'm just giving y'all a few guidelines that I'm gonna be trying to fo be following. And I feel like I have kind of been doing this the past six months as I knew this move was happening. Y'all heard me talk in my videos that I was being selective about what I was bringing in and I really did work through a lot of my hoard. So I feel like I did pretty good. But these are all things that I'm going to be thinking about and that, you know, if you are really having a problem with overcrowding and too much stuff, that things that you should maybe be thinking about as well. So now let's discuss ways that we can be more productive. That is a question I get all the time. A lot of y'all are in a funk and just not feeling productive or creative and just not sure how to get inspired. So this is kind of like difficult because actually I find one of the most inspiring things is to go shopping. <laughs> It's just really like seeing all this stuff and something will spark my creativity. So once again, like I'm probably not going to quit shopping. I'm just going to use all these tips and tricks to be more selective and to not take things home that I don't need that then makes me become overwhelmed. So we're going to try y'all. We're going to try. Also for me personally, writing a list and writing goals down like physically writing them down, not just thinking about them, writing them down, hanging them up and putting them somewhere you see them like has so much power. You can write a weekly list and weekly goals and daily lists and daily goals. And just seeing that and then once again, physically writing it down really has so much power and I feel like it's going to help you. Also cleaning out your space and getting it organized group like items together know what you have 
before you got, go out and purchase more things. And when you work on like items together, you'll be able to work faster and get more stuff done. I also enjoy watching other people work while I work. So I usually have on YouTube with some of my favorite creators and just seeing other people be creative also makes me feel creative and kind of helps the time pass faster when I'm not doing something I particularly like. So you just kind of get up, you gotta get moving. Like I always say the hardest part of every project is just getting started. So just get up, get it done, and all the other stuff will follow. And making a list keeps you organized so you don't get overwhelmed. Okay, this is what I need to get done. Then I'm gonna work on this next. So I'm hoping you can use some of these tips that I've given you today and try some of them and see what works for you, what motivates you, and what makes you productive. Okay, now I'm gonna answer some of the questions that y'all had in the comment section from my last video. If um, Usually, I try to answer all the comments the same day. So as soon as I post a video, I'll kind of set aside time to be able to answer your questions. So if you really want me to get back to your comment, that is the best time to watch the video as soon as it's posted and leave a comment. However, I've been crazy busy with just everything going on and I have not been able to do that. So I apologize. I'm, ho I'm hoping life slows down and I can get back to answering your comments. So one of the biggest questions is why am I not reselling anymore? Well, my life has changed. So over here in Louisiana, I had full-time daycare. The kids were in school full-time. They rode the bus to school. They rode the bus home. You know, it was just like a good setup where I had many, many hours to work. So in our new town, all the kids are going to different schools. I'm not even sure about the, the bus situation, if they're going to be riding the bus or if I'm going to be shuffling kids all around. And rent is only going to be in a Mother's Day Out program for two days a week for a couple of hours. So I already know, realistically, I am not going to have time to resell at this point in my life. However, it's in me. Like, I've been doing this for a long time. So I'm not going to stop my videos. And I'm still going to come at everything from a reselling point of view and still do reselling videos and stuff like that is just that I'm not going to be actually reselling my stuff it's going to be most likely things from my home or maybe I'll sell a few things I don't know but it's not going to be at the capacity that I've been doing here and I don't really want to do that because I want to have more time with y'all and to do YouTube videos and I can't do everything so I really have to think about where I want to put my time and energy and I've decided I wanted to put it into YouTube. So I'm still going to be doing my thrift flips. Now, every so often, if I find something that inspires me, then I might flip it and it might not be something from a house. But as far as being a full-time flipper, it's probably not going to happen right now. I mean, it may happen in the future. I can't say who's going to happen in the future. But I just know for right now in my life is just not something that I have time for but it's in me it will always be there and one day my life will calm down my kids will grow up I will have more time to focus on it but being a mom is and being a youtuber is what I've decided to put my energy into at this point in my life Okay, y'all also wanted to know why I'm not taking my big tools. Because we don't have a space for them at the moment. Um, we haven't decided if we're going to sell this house or not. Moving those big tools is going to be a chore. <laughs> and um, so at this point in time, we're just going to leave them there. Like, I've only had those tools for maybe a year. So going back to my lower grade tools i mean it's going to be a little bit hard but that's always what i've had and i didn't buy those tools for reselling like whether i resell or not we were going to get those tools because that's what my husband wanted he likes really nice tools and he saved up a long time for them so that really has nothing to do with my reselling business i'm just going to go back to my standard tools that i used before no big deal they are more compact and i'll be able to put them in the space that i have so 
that is why we are not moving them now if we sell this house we will probably build some kind of shop or something over there and move the tools that's kind of the game plan but everything's still kind of up in the air so we're just gonna wait and see what happens with that and then i guess that kind of leads to the question are we selling this house we have not decided um we just want to get settled in mississippi get the kids in school over there just make sure that it is a place that we want to stay um before we go ahead and sell this house because it's not like we love this house so much there's an, it's not like we can sell this house and then just say oh if we decide to come back we'll just buy another house like there's only this house <laughs> you know what i mean so to sell it would just be it'd be very difficult to get it back again so we just want to our goal is not to have two houses that is not what we want long term but we just want to make sure that we are not coming back here before we go ahead and make that move and sell this house all right guys i hope this video wasn't too rambly like i'm talking about trying not to hoard while i have a whole hoard to deal with but i feel like these are all tips and tricks that we can all use that i can especially use i want y'all to hold me accountable to these things and say no julie no you said you weren't gonna do that <laughs> let me know if you have any trip tips and tricks that you use to keep your hoard under control or if all the things that i talk about are just things that you already do um i applaud you if you've been able to keep your stuff under control because i feel like as a reseller it is really hard because you know you go thrifting and you see these amazing items and you feel like you can't leave them behind but you can y'all we can do this get together we can leave them behind and there's always more junk to find okay it's never ending there's always going to be more because we love to buy stuff and then get rid of it so people are doing that all day long and we're going to find more stuff all right guys y'all have a wonderful day and i will see y'all in the next video thanks for watching and give this video a big